welcome yogis to this 30-minute yin practice. We'll be focusing today on the lower back and the sacral area, the area in between the hips, the area where many muscles come together and where the spine and the legs are attached to each other. And this area, or tension in this area, is often a cause for lower back pain. So um, we're going to focus on that area, especially with our yin poses. Our yin practice is a beautiful practice that focuses on the facial area, our connective tissue, so-called. And the stretches that we do here is uh, very different from our flowing practice or our hatha yoga. Here we hold poses for a longer period of time, for between um, three and five minutes, um, to find a really deep release. And um, I've been teaching for many, many years, but I haven't seen bigger changes in the increase in flexibility than since I've been teaching the yin practice. So it's an absolutely beautiful practice to have as an addition to your stronger or flowing practices. So let's get started. We're going to start today in a dangle pose. It's our only standing pose in our yin practice. We're going to bring the feet about shoulder or hip width apart. And from here, we're just going to release and hang down. Take a little bit of time to settle in. If your hands are down onto the ground, have your palms facing up. It gives a little bit more of a sensation of surrender in our mind. Your legs can be straight or they can be bent. It never kind of feels right. You will feel a stretch here through the whole back of the body and you're welcome to push a little bit more of your weight into your toes if you'd like to find a little bit more of an edge. Now let your head just hang down, maybe close your eyes. Take a moment here to arrive on your mat and to arrive in your practice. Take a moment here to notice all the sensations in your body, in the back of the legs, in your calves, in your ankles, and all the way up into the thighs and around your hips. And feel that cascading sensation through the spine. This pose is sometimes called a waterfall pose as well, which is a beautiful name for it. We have this waterfall through our spine. There's a gentle rounding in the spine. And then become aware of the weight of the arms, Gently pulling onto the shoulders, releasing into your lats, into the side body. Maybe shake your head gently, letting go of any tension that you might be holding in the back of the neck and then feel how your face is soft, opening and closing your mouth a couple of times, releasing tension in your jaws. And then just sink down, be soft. Sometimes in a pose like this, your legs will shake and tremble. If that is you, then just let it shake and tremble. It is our mind that judges this, that attaches judgment to it, and often judges it as a weakness or a tightness. So let go of that. Clearly your body has a need to shake. And there is the bell. We're going to move straight from this dangle into a squat pose. So just release your hips down. If you have any tension in the knees, make sure that you sit down onto a block or a bolster or maybe a little pillow that you have and then continue on with this stretch into the spine. But now you find you have compression in both the hips and the knees. And so allow now your sitting bones to sink down. Let your head just be heavy. And again, if your hands are down onto the ground, have your palms to face upwards. It just helps us mentally to release and to surrender a little bit more. Now in our yin practice, our breath is not really that important. We don't have a big focus on the breath. However, I really like to use my exhalation to create more softness. So I like to feel on each inhale how there's a little bit of a release and maybe a little bit of a lightness that comes into the pose. And then on the exhalation, I'd like to move into that to really deepen. Become aware of any of the sensations that you feel. Now, you might meet discomfort or intensity. And if that's what you meet, just meet that. Don't judge that and don't push away from it. But just release into it. We are very used to staying away from discomfort in this culture. We're very focused on having a comfortable life, comfortable car, comfortable bed, comfortable food. 
But growth and transformation can only come from discomfort, can only come if you move out of your comfort zone. And that's something we're doing in our yin practice. So scan your body for tension, tension that you're holding, and release that tension, just let it go. You might notice that as you're scanning your body that you're gently pushing back into the tension that you feel. Let's see if you can let go of that. Soften your toes, soften into your hips. Feel this real stretchy sensation into the lower back, into your sacrum. And ease into that. Allow this tissue, tissue to slowly open up and to slowly release. Trying to stay present. And trying to meet anything that's there to be met. Any tension, any tightness, any discomfort. Any opening, any heat. Try to just meet it. And there we are. Slowly roll yourself forward. Bring your forearms down onto the ground. And as slowly as you can, release your legs out and come and lay onto your belly for our rebound. Our rebound is as much part of the pose as the pose itself. Sometimes it feels really quite hard to come out of the poses. Then just feel that. And once you're down, release your cheek down onto the ground and just find that softness now and notice what is happening. What are the after effects of this pose? Also here, just feel anything that's there to be felt. Don't move away from it. Don't move and fidget into it. Allow your body to find a balance all by itself. Become aware of the slow changes in your body. Each time that you feel a need to fit it or to change, see if you can resist that. See if you can just stay with the stillness. And then we're going to find our next pose, which is a sphinx or a seal pose. So where we have been opening through the back of the body, now we're going to open through the front of the body. This is our, seal po our sphinx pose. We're dipping down through the chest. The elbows are underneath the shoulders and we're lengthening and Lengthening into the chest and the front of the body. If you'd like to add on a little bit more, you're welcome to find your seal or anything in between the seal and the sphinx, meaning that you bring your hands down onto the ground instead of your elbows. Also here, allow your hips to sink down. Or you can bring your hands all the way underneath the shoulders. In that case, turn your hands either back, your fingers either back or out, and then sink down and dip down. So a sphinx or a seal pose, as I'm in now, or anything in between where you bring your hands more out either in front or sideways. Lengthen here into the front of the body. Feel into the front of the body. The front of our body is related to that part of our body that we show ourselves that with, so that we show the world. It relates to the image that we hold up of ourselves. And quite often it relates to the stories that we tell ourselves about ourselves. So feel into this space and feel what it feels like to open up into this space. In our yin practice, we're trying to allow the energy to flow. And we're using these stretches into the facial area. The facial area is where the water runs through our body. It's also where our meridians run through. 
And so imagine that in our fascia, there's little rivers running, rivers of water. It's important to stay dehydrated because of this. But it's also where our energy flows through. It flows through these rivers of water. In yoga, we call it prana. In Chinese medicine, you call it qi. It's the same thing. It's our life force. It's the energy that we have within us. And here, we're stretching into these rivers. We're opening them up. We're lengthening them so that the water and our energy can flow more freely. So often what happens is we build up scar tissue and maybe inflammation into our fascia and in our yin practice we work deeply into releasing that scar tissue and the inflammation. A very, very beneficial practice. A healing practice. However, often when we're in the poses we actually don't really feel that. And when we're in the poses we feel a lot of intensity discomfort and we often don't relate to that as a healing often we see that more as a hurting but feel through that feel past that past those sensations aiming to find your edge and then stay in that and just notice what happens in your body you will feel a lot of compression at the moment into your lower back and if you're not used to that that feels really quite strange but stay with it just making sure that you don't feel any strong pinching sensations like so, somebody is stabbing you with a knife. If that's what you feel, then you have to move out of the pose a little bit more to find a better area to stay in. We're dipping the chest all the way down and we get that stretch into the tips of the shoulders. And if you have your hands down, keep your arms really straight. And let go of tension that you might be holding in your belly, your ro lower rib cage, the upper part of the chest, tension in the shoulders or into the back of the neck. Maybe open and close your mouth a couple of times, letting go of tension in your jaw. And then slowly bend your elbows out to the side and come and lay back down onto the ground. If you prefer to roll over onto your back, please feel free to do so. But if you're comfortable on your belly, then stay on your belly. This pose that we have in between all our poses is called the rebound. And this is where the goodness happens, allowing fluids to run into areas where there was compression before, allowing our body to find a new balance and where before there might have been scar tissue or tissue might have not been very well aligned. We've stretched it out and now here in the rebound we're allowing that tissue to find a new balance, a new connection, and hopefully that connection is better than the connection that it had before. Sometimes we need to do the pose a couple of times or repeat it throughout the week to find that better connection, depending on how often you practice your yin. You will feel a different sensation in your rebound. There will be more opening or the first time, often, if you're new to yin, it feels really very intense to come out of these poses. So all yin poses are on the ground, except for our dangle, which is our only standing pose where we started with today. And our next pose is going to be our sleeping swan pose, working into the outside of the hip. Then we're going to start on the right side. So we're going to bring our leg out in front. The foot goes over to the left side and the knee stays behind the right wrist. From there, we're going to release the left hip down in the direction of the left heel. And we're sinking ourselves forward and down. Now we want to get a nice stretch into the lower back. And you should feel that, especially after your previous swings or seal. And you should get a stretch in the outside of your right hip. Now, if you don't feel it, maybe you have to walk your hands more over to the right or to the left. Or maybe you have to add a little bit of a twist in order 
to get that stretch. And then release it down. And finding here how you can really open up into the outside of your hip. Stretching here into your glutes, your IT band, your TFL. All these muscles that are on the outside of the hip connecting into the sacrum. And we're trying as much as possible to release tension. So you can be much higher up with your hips or much lower down. And in our yin practice, our alignment is not really very important. It's really about what it feels like, the pose. So we all will look very different because in the end, all our bodies are very different. But we should all feel the same as we're in this pose. Keep on scanning your body for tension and keep on releasing the tension. Let go of tension in your hands, your fingers, your arms, your shoulders. Allow your chest to just sink down direction or into the ground. Let your head be heavy and your neck be soft. Release tension in your breath, in your chest. And then soften in that area where you feel the stretch most. We're going to move from here into a shoelace pose. So we're going to come up to sitting, bringing our left leg out in front, swinging it all the way around. We're going to keep the right leg up and, up and top, and we're going to try to bring the knees on top of each other, sitting in between the heels. From here, we're going to go forward. If you feel that this is just too much for you, it doesn't work for you, then you bring your feet in front of your knees and stretch it forward just like this in an extended cross-legged position. So either this position, you should still feel the stretch, into your glutes, or you find your shoelace pose, knees on top of each other. Just feel what is right for you, and then release into that. At no time allow your ego to decide what you need to do. Follow your body and the sensations that you feel in your body, trying to find your edge, uh, trying to find where you feel that stretch best, not pushing through, but also not holding back. Trying to just find that spot where you're just out of your comfort zone. So the, our muscle tissue, you can imagine that is more like, it is like an um, elastic band. That's what it looks like. So you stretch it out and you release it and it comes back to its original shape. Our fascia that we're stretching in now, which is all the white tissue in your body, is more like a plastic bag. And so imagine that this plastic bag has been wrinkled up. Now you're going to pull it out a little bit. If you pull it not hard enough, the wrinkles are still going to be there. However, if you pull it too hard, you will tear the plastic bag. So you just have to pull it so firmly that you stretch it out without ripping it. But at the same time, you'll see that all those fibers, all that tissue is getting a nice stretch into it. That's what we're looking for. And you imagine the tissues are connected like this in your body. And what we're doing is we're gently pulling it out. And in our rebound, we're allowing it to come back together in a better balance. So at the moment, it can be like this, with a lot of tension and tightness, some scar tissue. We pull it out and then release it in our rebound so that the tissue has a better connection and fluids can run better through this area. That's what we're doing, and it's just a waiting game. We're just finding our maximum range of motion, and we're just sitting there, and we're softening into it, and we're just waiting. We're waiting for our body to sort itself out. We're waiting for the tissue to release. And from here, we're going to come into our sleeping swan on the left side now. So the right leg, that should be on top. Bring it all the way around to the back. 
And this time it is the right hip that comes towards the left heel. The left knee is behind the left wrist in that direction. And then we're sinking ourselves down, getting this stretch now into the outside of the left hip. And just feel here where you need to be. As mentioned on the right side, you're welcome to move yourself more over to the left or to the right. That way you either intensify or you release. And you can also add a twist, bringing your right shoulder down. And that might also help you to find your edge better. Or you can just go out straight in front and lay down like this. And allow that stretch to happen in the outside of the hip, the outside of your um, glutes, the outside of your leg. Sometimes we feel this deep in the inside of the hip. That's your iliacus muscle. That's the muscle that's the opposite side of your glutes. And it's the pulling of the glutes that creates that sensation. And the sensation in your iliacus muscle is quite uncomfortable. It feels like um, a real strong pulling on the inside of your hip. And just try to release and ease into it. If our glutes are too tight, it pulls all the time onto the iliacus and that might cause some tension in that muscle and we're releasing that now. It doesn't feel when you're here and you feel that sensation, it doesn't feel like you're releasing into it. But you do. And you will feel that especially in your rebound, once you come out of the pose, then you might start to feel the softness returning, the openness returning into that muscle. Keep on releasing, keep on softening. Scanning your body for tension. Easing into the discomfort or the intensity that you feel. And here we find our rebound. So slowly coming out of the pose, being very mindful, coming to lay onto either your belly or onto your back, whatever feels like a better option for you. And then lay down and allow all the fluids to run back into those areas where there was compression before. Taking a couple of deep breaths and feel the weight of your body sinking into the earth. Feel into the space where you felt the stretch most and just notice what is there. Observe without judgment. Maybe you feel tingling or coolness or heat. Maybe you feel tightness or an opening. Maybe you feel a lightness or a heaviness. Try to really feel and observe and be curious about what is there instead of judgmental. Become aware of what's happening in your mind. Let go of the attachment to the stories that you tell yourself. Next, we're going to find our half settle pose. So we're going to come up into a seated position for a moment. We're going to bring our right leg back, just like this. And we're going to release the hip down. Now, if that feels like there's too much tension into your knee, you're going to need a block and sit on top of a block. 
Otherwise, you can keep your leg like this. We're going to lay back in a half settle pose. Now, when you come back and your knee comes off the ground, as I'm showing at the moment, just let that happen as long as it feels okay into the front of the knee. You can also maybe pull your foot back a little bit or allow your knee to go out to the side, to the right side a little bit more. Sometimes you feel this as a strong stretch into the top of the foot. In that case, you can turn your foot maybe out a little bit this way. Or you can also maybe bring a blanket underneath your foot to find more comfort. These are half saddle pose, getting a big stretch now through the front of the hip. If you'd like to add on, you're welcome to bend your left leg. You can wing the knee out to the side or you can push it over to the right and just feel into the front of the right body, our focus area. For some people that's not enough and they need to bend their knee and bring it in in the direction of their chest. So just feel what is right for you. I myself like to wing my knee over to the right side and that gives me more of a stretch into the front of the hip, but that might not be you, because your body will not be the same as my body. So play around a moment and then find how you can get that stretch best, to stretch into the front of the right leg, and then just find that softness, find that stillness. And feel here into the space, the front of the hip, the front of your thigh, connecting to the knee and feel where you first feel this stretch, maybe in the knee, maybe it starts a little bit higher up into the thigh. And then feel where you feel the stretch most. And then bring it up into your belly area and see where you start to lose that stretch. Become aware that you let go of tension now into your buttocks, into your glutes. Just feel that softness there, not pushing yourself up away from the floor, but sinking yourself down towards the floor. Taking a couple of deep breaths into your belly area. In our yin practice, it's really quite okay to add on during the, pre during the pose. If you start to feel that you're starting to find more softness, we always want to move into that. And sometimes that can mean that you have to deepen the pose a little bit. For example, I might choose to hold on to my knee and bring my leg, my left leg up a little bit to intensify the stretch. But we're trying not to move out of the pose. So it's okay to deepen it because we move into our maximum range of motion a little bit more, but we're trying to avoid moving out of the stretch before the three-minute bell will ring. And whatever you feel, just feel that, just be with that, just notice what is there. Trying to find that position where you feel that something is happening, that something is shifting and changing. From here we're changing sides. Now maybe you have more opening and you can change from laying down or maybe you, have to need, you need to push yourself up and then undo your right leg and redo your left leg and then lay back down into the half settle on the opposite side. Feel here into this side without any expectations that what you felt on the right side is what you're going to feel on the left side. Feel free to have a little bit of time to move and to fidget and to find the right position to be in. And then once you feel that you are in the right position, then that's where you're going to stay. That's where you're going to just hang out. Our yin practice is a very mindful practice when we're moving out of our comfort zone when our mind sees this as a great opportunity to become chatty and to tell us off. And so together with scanning our body, we also try to scan our mind. We try to become aware of these stories, these repetitive stories that we tell ourselves. And instead of stopping these stories, which is not our aim, we're trying to just allow these stories to be there, but we let go of attachment. So we just allow the stories to be there. But we see them as nothing more than just stories. They say nothing about us. Keep on moving into the intensity. Become aware not to move away from it. Move into it, just be 
with the discomfort and trying to find comfort in being out of your comfort zone. Not hardening, but easing, surrendering, releasing. Keep on releasing, keep on letting go. Stretching your deep into the psoas muscle, you might feel that little pull into the lower back. Just let that be there and keep on sinking your lower back down into the ground, towards the ground. Taking all the time you need, maybe rolling over to your right side, releasing your left foot, maybe pushing yourself up. And from here, release your legs out and soften into your rebound pose. Now this rebound will turn into our pentacle pose, completing our practice today. So take your time, settle in, release, let go. Become aware of how the earth is carrying you. Become aware of the weight of your body pressing down gently into the ground. And allow yourself to feel really heavy. Allow yourself to let go. I invite you to stay in your pentacle pose or your shavasana as long as you like. This is where the healing, this is where the benefits of the practice really will come to you. So give yourself that, that moment of rest as a little present. The benefits of our yin practice often don't come to us straight after or during the practice. Most of the time we only feel it after a couple of hours or maybe the next day. So... Give yourself a little bit of time and try in a couple of hours or maybe tomorrow morning, try to feel how you feel. Most of the time people um, mention that they feel lightness in the joints, lightness in the movement. So hopefully you will feel those benefits later on during your day or tomorrow morning. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. With love and gratitude. Namaste. Namaste.